I would like to share with you the uh, drawing that I've uh, made for uh, the Temple of God. Um, just trying to, uh, you know, render the uh, picture of the Temple of God that is uh, described in Second Chronicles chapter three and four, where basically you have the three parts. The first part, which is the innermost part, we in at the end there, the far farthest end in this picture, is the uh, most holy place where the Ark of God is and the cherubims that protects, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Ark of God uh, where the mercy seat, seat is. And then uh, then you have the veil and in the center part between the two pillars in um, and the, the um, in your most holy place, you have the holy place. You know, I've, I've got the, um, the tables there and where the priests, um, you know, all would gather and have their meals together there uh, before God to, you know, to kind of like um, have a fellowship there in the presence of God, okay, um, with, uh, with joy and, uh, and blessing from God. And then outside that part, you'll have the, um, where you have, uh, you know, the court area or um, the place where they have, uh, they've got the altar of burnt sacrifice. And then you've got uh, all some of the, um, um, you know, some of the uh, vessels there or containers where on the right and the left where you can wash your feet and cleanse yourself and, um, and then whatever offering you have at the uh, huge table of uh, um, altar of sacrifice and uh, where um, the, uh, you know, whoever goes to the priest and they can help um, whoever wants to go there to make atonement, to help them to make the atonement, be it uh, offering of uh, a, a bullock or, I mean, a cow or a goat or sheep or even poor, let's say the turtle doves or pigeon pigeons you know and then um you know that's like the closest one extreme um foreground here you see the big uh big altar and then um followed um by you know i've got that uh sort of sea of um i think the, the sea of uh sort of a huge container with 12 oxen supposedly to be in three oxen fa facing um, the different directions, the four directions, north, south, east, west. And, um, you know, they've got the water, water there for, uh, I guess, for cleansing. And then, um, near the pillar, you got the, the altar of incense where you have got this, uh, you know, the, the candlestick lighted up and a shrub, uh, shrub bread. And, uh, you know, it's like where you have the, um, I, I, I think over here it's basically the, the altar of incense. Um, you have to keep, you know, letting it uh, burn and don't let the uh, fire go out. And then you have the candlesticks there, you know, the the one with the seven uh, candlesticks. And um, so that's where um, you know the altar of incense is, very close to um, the temple of God or the entrance to the temple of God. The altar of incense here, I would say, it would. Uh, represent, you know, like prayer, you know, before you come to God, you have prayers, and um, before you even have the uh, closeness to even pray, way before that, you can see, first and foremost would be the uh, burnt offering, that altar of burnt offering, the first thing, which means that, um, you know, you got to repent, let's say, of your sins, um, accept God, um, Jesus is a personal Savior, who died for your sins, accept Him, and, uh, and you know, and then you talk about praying before God, right? So it's like a one step at a time, and then going into the holy place. That's why you really, you know, in a way like, um, um, like um, in Revelation. Sorry, I'm not sure exactly where, but we become priests and uh, kings of God. So priests, in a way, like we do not only pray for ourselves but also pray for others. Okay. So if you want to get close to God, definitely get into reading of his words, really day and night, meditating uh, of his words, other than just uh, thinking that you're living the so-called the Christian way of life. It's, it's, you know, it's a beginning, but, you know, ultimately to be really close to God, you want to be like the priest, you know, day and night, really knowing his words 
studying his words to be close to God or the closest to God. So I, I suppose um, um, although we don't really have this grand temple of God today in the Christian um, kind of era, but of course we probably would expect such things to take place, the uh, building of the, the real final temple before Jesus comes again but you know, in Jerusalem by the Jews. Um, so anyway, um, what this represent is our spiritual progression. Um, it's really step by step, like you know, your repentance, really confessing of your sins before God, and and then you know, you come closer forward and um, with prayer and eating, getting even the you know, um, holier place, which is where the priests are, eating together, eating of His words. You know, that that's where you really get close to God. Okay. Um, uh, it's really next to him, other than the veil there, where you get the veil full of the, you know, the the supposedly the design of cherubims with the um, lots of uh, w with the wings, the cherubims. So I kind of do kind of the veil very roughly with the vertical lines and like bird-like thing or bird-like sketches there to show, you know, the the veil is supposedly to be uh, full of uh, the pictures of cherubims. Those are uh, those are the uh, creature protecting God. Okay, I hope that um, you like this picture that I drew. Um, you can see that two o ten June twenty one. So that's quite a long time and uh, ago. Uh, but you know, I thought it's good to um, share my thought about what the cherubim is all about. I mean, sorry, the temple of God is all about, and you know, the, the two grand pillars and. A um, couple rows of works of pomegranates or whatever. It's it's all in the um, you know uh, chapters, the two chapters, um, Second Chronicles, chapter three and four. Um, and uh, well, thank you for watching and listening.